In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why is Good Friday good? I imagine that is a question that has been asked multiple times. It's not a new question. Now, if you search Google, you will find several answers. One explanation is that the title is unique to the English language and is derived from an old English des designation, God's Friday. Sort of makes sense. Now, across church traditions, thinking can range from simply the word good is aligned to the word holy to Jesus' death is good for us in that through the cross, our path to God is cleared. Jesus gave his life that we might live. Now, of the three I have listed, it's the third explanation that grabbed my attention. How paradoxical that the act of someone undergoing pain and torture and death is considered good. And yet this mystery lies at the heart of the gospel. That God so loved the world that he gave his son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yet in the 21st century, this thought is hard to comprehend and we can find ourselves questioning the goodness of this day. Now, maybe our current circumstances have left us questioning the goodness, not just of this day, but of God. In addition to the age old problems we have been struggling with in our modern experience, bigotry, war, poverty and homelessness, just to name a few, our lives have changed dramatically with the spread of the coronavirus, thrusting us into a global pandemic that is causing dire consequences. We've been isolated from each other as we've watched the disease spread. We've seen hospitals overrun and people dying on a scale that we have not seen in over a century probably one of the most heart-wrenching headlines that I have come across was this. It was just a mid-pandemic, loved ones grieve separately. And there was a picture underneath that headline and it showed a single person sitting in front of a coffin, utterly alone in silent contemplation. No one sat with him, no one comforting him. I would like to argue that perhaps more than any other year, we are able to identify with those at the foot of Jesus' cross, experiencing a feeling of helplessness as we watch those we love grapple and suffer in the midst of great crisis, understanding that the very loneliness that is causing us to suffer is the very thing necessary to flatten the curve of this pandemic and bring us onto the road to recovery. As we gaze on the image of Jesus' mother and the disciple whom he loved, taking care of each other in the face of such immense suffering and loss, see them adapting to the change, comforting one another, a new family born out of the ashes of death, can we too, in the midst of our struggle, learn new ways to be community? Through the pandemic, we have seen people of different faiths and no faith coming together to work and care for one another. Churches have embraced new technologies, found new ways to worship with their communities online. We've been calling each other, writing to each other, making face masks for each other, and encouraging each other like never before. We are doing our best to comfort each other, sending words of consolation and solidarity to those who are grieving the deaths of loved ones while separated from family. And we have been offering and continue to offer humble gratitude to those who are putting their lives on the line, working in hospitals, pharmacies, grocery stores, post offices 
and other professions deemed necessary for survival. You know, if we were able to take a step back to freeze this moment, we might find that today good is not pointing to the death and suffering in our experience, but rather to the new possibilities of life emerging from the Lenten ashes that we were sprinkled with or smeared upon our foreheads a few weeks ago. You know, one of the great leaders of the Oxford movement, John Kemble, once encapsulated the goodness of this day in one of his Good Friday sermons. He writes this, For on the first Friday that ever was, Adam was created pure and good after God's own image. And on this, the best Friday that ever was or can be, we the sinful and fallen children of Adam obtained in a manner a right to be newly created after the same image through the death and passion of him who made himself our second Adam, that he might be the father of everlasting life to us as the first Adam had been the father of sin and death. This day is good because it is the door that leads us to our Heavenly Father and to everlasting life. This day is good because in Jesus we see the new life we are called to and created for. But as God calls us to the victory of the cross, he also calls us to its nakedness. But he never calls us anywhere that Jesus has not been first and will not stand beside us. God is our refuge, our ever-present help in trouble, as the psalmist writes. Today, wherever we stand, whatever we feel, whatever we have lost, we can offer it all to Jesus and be reassured that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Jesus died. Jesus was buried, but Jesus rose again. We are people of the cross, but we are also people of the resurrection. It is Friday, but Sunday is coming. Praise God. Amen.